Hello, listeners, and greetings from wonderful but also very weird Berlin. I am still traveling and getting over my last cold, so apologies again for the less than ideal audio quality. I'll soon be using some better recording equipment and also starting to do some video with this podcast, so be sure to subscribe to get notified of future episodes. In the spirit of moving fast, I'm also doing this podcast much like a startup, so I'm kind of just testing different kinds of formats and topics to see what works. Thanks to everyone that has given a listen so far or subscribed. So this week, I'm thinking back to marketing activities that I've done that have proven to be a complete waste of time, and boy, there has been so many. Although really, I think that's one of the best parts about startup growth marketing, all that experimenting and failing and learning and only occasionally finding something that works. When you do, it can be a great feeling, not just of relief, but that you might be at the start of something really big that'll put your little startup into hyper growth mode. That feeling is unfortunately often short lived, but you know what, you should enjoy it while you can because the startup journey is long and fraught with so many ups and downs. Well, mostly downs, but you get my point. As many first time founders start their own journey, I'm often asked things like, uh, what marketing book do you recommend to read? To which I usually reply, uh, well, none of them. That's because you learn early stage growth marketing by doing, not reading about doing. Every business is simply too unique, so really, who cares about what someone else did at some other startup? You kind of need to find your own way, find things that work, uh, and then I guess to complete the cycle, you would write your own book about it. Ah, the circle of life. Although I guess it's perhaps worth mentioning that if you want to read a book, check out Hooked by Nir Eyal. Uh, It's on basically how to build habit-forming products. If you're a total marketing noob, it's a good thing to think about, you know, not just top of funnel and user acquisition. You're not really going to stand much chance for growth without also creating that sometimes very elusive user retention. And as a bit of a side rant, I wouldn't be so seduced by all these sneaky growth tactics, you know, the dark UI patterns, the sometimes nasty tricks that we make our users do to get addicted to our products. You should instead be focused on providing so much value that your users simply can't live without it as part of their workflow or daily life. Yes, of course, we use email and notifications and other nudges, but in many cases, the path to growth is laid out much more easily by simply reducing friction. If you reduce the friction that a user needs to go through to discover the value of your product, you'll probably find that you grow much faster. As a final side rant to the side rant, it seems that Nier has even changed his tune as of late because his more recent book is titled Indistractable. That talks about how to free yourself from all those terrible product marketing techniques and quote growth hacks that so many software companies have put upon us, many of which were inspired by his previous book. (laughs) Yikes. Now, before you go on and get too distracted by something else like a VC humble bragging on Twitter or some mind numbing TikTok algorithm, there is really two points that I'd like to try to help you understand as you embark on your marketing endeavors. The first is, much like venture capital marketing, well, it kind of follows that 80-20 rule, basically meaning that only 20% of what you do will probably make an impact. So what this really means that is if you put all your marketing eggs in one basket, well, you're pretty much certain to fail. One thing I often see founders do is they kind of set up this really, really big campaign or a really large partnership. They think that's going to kind of solve everything. And well, it almost never does. I mean, I've been marketing startups for over a decade and even I can't nail it with a singular strategy. Instead, you need to test and experiment with many different growth strategies to find one that will actually work and ideally a few that will complement each other. To use some silly startup phrases, this is called creating a flywheel or a growth engine. It's also why that in the early stages, you need to move through your growth experiments really, really quickly. If a campaign or a tactic takes months to launch and learn from, you'll likely find that you've run out of your most precious resource, that being time. Oh, and since supposed marketing experts love to make up silly sayings and analogies, I'm gonna give you my own to make the second point. That is that when you're building growth for your startup, yeah, it's kind of like a big bad concert and you are the conductor. You're managing a wide variety of instruments and if you succeed, they all play at the right time and with a pleasing melody. Unfortunately, we all know that in the early stages, things are more often than not very much out of tune. So if anything, I might recommend looking at your marketing stack, focus on the noisiest and most out of tune instrument first. Start by bringing that into tune, then the next instrument and the next, and before you know it, a beautiful melody of growth might emerge. 
So now that I've regaled you with those silly analogies and fluffy thoughts, let's get to the meat of things, to the marketing activities that I have in general found to be a complete waste of time for early stage companies. Maybe you can save yourself some time by avoiding these things, and in a future podcast, we'll delve a bit deeper into the things you should try instead. First, user personas. I'm not sure who made these things up, but let's blame academia or perhaps the big consulting firms. Generally, what I see is a young startup, they make four super vague user personas, they proudly display them to the team, and then they file them away, never to look at them again. In the really early days, your user persona is whoever will pay you. <laughs> Focus on talking to them, learning from them, and making them super happy. Once you've done that, all you need to do is go find more of them. Also, from my experience, the primary user persona or user demographic or whatever you want to call it, it's often never who you expect it to be. You can only learn what that is or who that is with some trial and error and of course a bit of qualitative and quantitative data to parse through. Next waste of time, marketing conferences. And spoiler alert, I'm going to have a whole rant coming on how useless tech events are for early stage companies. But when it comes to the marketing conferences specifically, I suppose it's no surprise that marketers like to market themselves to other marketers at marketing conferences. Whew. Sure, I've also spoken at many of these venues, at least during pre-COVID times, but now I think there's such a waste of time that I don't plan to anymore. If you're a newbie founder or a marketer, I can see the appeal of hearing the CMO of blah 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 talk, but their advice, it's usually not very tactical. Often, these CMOs work at really well-funded startups, and therefore they have like a million more times resources than you do. So that in itself should make it really clear on why that what they're saying or offering to an early stage company really doesn't matter. The truth is you need to find your own strategy. Replicating what some very senior marketer did at a well-funded company will probably not help you. I mean, to be candid, aren't we all bored of hearing the 15th version of how Dropbox grew their business? I know I am. Moving on, let's talk about launching small one-time campaigns. Or said another way, let's test this new thing but not spend too much money or time on it. With that statement, you've pretty much sealed the fate of this new channel. Any new channel or tactic, it takes time and several iterations to validate. Throwing $100 and a few hours of your time will almost guarantee that you don't see any results and therefore don't pursue it further. While it's good to kill your bad ideas quickly, it's also bad to make assumptions on very limited effort and of course very limited data. Real growth can only be achieved through repeatable growth tactics and channels. Doing a bunch of small one-offs will probably not get you there. All right, here's another thing that founders love to ask me about or think about way too much. Fancy analytics and marketing tools. I mean, how many SaaS marketing tools should a sassy SaaS startup use? You have so many to choose from and they all look so shiny, of course. The truth is, I don't think you need any of those tools until you're hitting a certain amount of scale, like millions of monthly events or a significant annual revenue. Up until that point, you really just need two things, Google Analytics, and yes, you guessed it, that is free, and a lot of Google Spreadsheets, which happens to also be free. I think you'll also find that your developers really hate to integrate and instrument all of these fancy marketing tools, and really, who can blame them? It is much better to save their energy working on your core product and you instead do some extra number crunching. I have also found that this manual work of, with the data, it tends to bring you much closer to it because you quite literally have to touch it. That can be a lot more effective for you in uncovering the needles in the data haystack that you might be able to leverage further. As a side bonus, when your investors ask you about your metrics, you'll actually know them because you will have to have been working with them and inputting them every single day. And last, but of course not least, biggest waste of time, getting way too much startup marketing advice from social media like LinkedIn, blogs, or <clears throat> podcasts from supposed experts. Oh no, it's already too late if you're listening to this, so you better take out those earbuds and start working on your growth experiments and optimizations. I am being a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but there's also some half-truth to this as well. Today, there's probably way too much advice for founders online, and yeah, I acknowledge I am part of the problem. Although I do try to at least tell you things straight without any ulterior motives or things to sell you. I mean, if anything, I'm trying to sell you some confidence that you can probably figure this out on your own. And hey, if you don't and you totally screw up your growth marketing, there's even some value there. 
because after that, I'm sure you'll screw up things much, much less in your next startup. Until then, founders, I wish you much success and many charts that go up and to the right.